this video we will show how we renovated this old apartment kitchen from how we demoed and prepped it for the installer to our finishing touches after the install hopefully this will help someone out there with ideas to decide what you can do yourself to save some money and what to contract out the custom kitchen company I use is great the owner came to do all the measuring with a cargo van that has a mini showroom in it of all the cabinet door samples and colors including the granite why we decided to go with a custom kitchen installer simply because it was better quality and cost effective some examples are 100% wood instead of compressed wood that you usually get from Home Depot Lowe's also custom cabinets instead of settling for standard sizes from these other big stores as you will see during the install this was important to us because the sink drain being outside the wall instead of the inside of it the cabinets here need to be offset. Another plus is the custom cut granite counter. You'll see as we go further. So we start with the removal of the cabinet next to this half wall. So we can cut it down the same height as the cabinets. And extend the new counter over the wall. Creating more counter space. And be able to put stools on the other side. Making it an eating counter as well. We measured and marked the height on both sides, drawing a straight line with a straight edge, and also check the level. I wouldn't trust just the floor level. It's very important to make this wall the same height as the cabinet, not including the counter. I also confirmed this height measurement with the cabinet maker and installer. Using the reciprocating saw and cutting as straight as possible, including the 2x4 framing inside the wall. Once the top is removed, we reinforce it with the new 2x4s. The counter will extend about 10 inches from the wall to be able to use stools if you wish. On the rest of the half wall on this side, we remove the old tile top only, leaving it the same height to keep the kitchen separated from the living room. We reinforce the top with new 2x4s and screw half inch treated plywood as a base for the new 8 inch granite top to lay on that will match the rest of the kitchen counter and backsplash. Notice the plywood is cut in one whole piece making the corner sturdier. This is now ready for the granite to be installed. Now we continue to remove the cabinets. We decided to leave the cabinet with the sink for last to be able to use it as long as possible while waiting for the new cabinets to come in. So we cut the counter to be able to remove the rest. As we remove the back panel of the old cabinets, it exposed some of the plumbing of this kitchen and the bathroom on the other side of this wall. This made us very cautious as we tear down the drywall to replace it with the cement boards. No sledge hammering here. Although the backsplash tiles are easy to take off with a hammer and painter's knife, we also cut some of the uh, grout to be able to take off the drywall at the same time. A word of advice, in a situation you have plumbing and electrical together in walls, don't try to be Mr. Demo Reality Show Star. Taking down a piece at a time will avoid injury and unnecessary repairs to the electrical and plumbing. The first thing we do is replace and add wood wherever it's needed. This section on the floor didn't even have a bottom plate, so using treated 2x4s, Tapcon screws, we pre-drill and screw them into the floor. On these half walls, doing the corner beads compounding before the counters are installed is much easier before the granite tops are in the way. Back to the wall. We added treated 2x4s and strips of metal on the outside of the 2x4s that have plumbing pipes and electric wires going through them. This will stop screws from puncturing them. We marked the 2x4s on the floor and ceiling to make it easy to screw the cement boards and will also help the cabinet install a screw in the cabinets to the studs. Once all the studs are marked and measured, we're ready for the cement boards. We're using the scoring tool for the first time and see how effective it is. It does take some getting used to, but it works. These half inch cement boards are much heavier than gypsum drywall, but in my opinion, they are much more efficient when it comes to waterproofing a kitchen or a bathroom. After cutting the square hole for the outlet, 
and stove hood exhaust fan wire, we put it in place. A perfect fit, including the notch for the sink drain pipe. We put the wire through the hole. Since we have so much plumbing and wires in this wall, we take the extra precaution of placing a chalk line for every 2x4 before screwing. Notice wires and pipes are marked on the board indicating where not to drive screws in those areas. This should help the cabinet installer as well. Using cement board screws, we space them 8 inches apart. We measure, cut and fit the second sheet. Using the oscillator, we notch the section going over the counter wall and the outlet and screw it in. All screwed in and ready for screen taping and thin set to the joints. 90% of this will be covered with granite and cabinets, so no need to do much finishing here. The night before the installer came, we removed the old kitchen sink and cabinet. Notice the drain pipe along the wall was installed on the inside of the cabinets. The new cabinets will be custom cut to size, as mentioned earlier, as you will see during the installation. No exposed drain pipe running inside the cabinets like this. It will be hidden between the back of the custom cabinets and the wall, instead of cutting into them. This is another advantage of getting a custom cabinet company. We got rid of all the debris plus swept the whole area. We have all the joints taped and compounded on the cement board and it's ready for the installer. At 8 a.m. next day, the installers got an early start. They already have the bottom cabinets in place to make sure they fit and marking the drain and faucet pipes at the back panel to drill the holes. Notice the space between the wall and this corner cabinet here. Cabinets were made about three inches shorter in depth. As I mentioned before, this will hide the drain pipe that runs alongside the wall the perfect solution for this problem. The holes are drilled for the pipe and then it's set in place. They screwed it into the corner cabinet next to it and then to the end cabinet on the other side. It came out perfect. Moving on to the last of the floor cabinets. Leveling and measuring the distance between them is very important making sure 30 inches is left for the stove. Next were the top cabinets in which were installed very quick. After screwing them to the wall studs, the shelves were put in and finally all the doors for the top and bottom were installed. Screwing them and aligning them was the most tedious part of the install, I think. It takes longer to do the doors. As soon as they were done, the granite guy came by and took measurements for the counters and backsplash, in which will take two weeks for that install. Meantime, we will change the water shutter valves before they come back with the counter. By the way, a stainless steel sink is included, in which they install for us as well, and it's actually an undemounted sink. A bit of dead space on this corner but it would have been dead space on the inside anyway because of the Lazy Susan. These rotating shelves are ideal for corner cabinets and that back corner will not be missed. While waiting for the counter, it's also a good time to finish the compounding of these corners and the walls where the granite won't cover. After the granite is installed, we will install a stove exhaust hood fan will be the filter type. I 
realized too late, we could have installed a duct through the top cabinet and into this drop seal and going out to the exterior wall. Definitely will consider that in the future. Two weeks later, they were back with the counters with some of the slabs already cut to size. It looks like we planned. The 8 inches on top of the half wall definitely gives it a different look compared to the tile top we demoed. And the corner going into the sink is really nice. They have it all leveled and glued into the cabinets. The sink is going in. I'm glad I don't have to do that job. While outside, the wall splash is being cut on site. And here it is installed. Drilling the holes for the faucet that we will install later. So, the cabinets, counter, and backsplash is all done. That includes the windowsill too, which came out real nice. The rest is up to us. We start with painting the wall by the stove area. And before moving the stove back, we install the stove exhaust under the cabinets. The half wall 8 inch counter came out so good. So we thought of uh, giving it an extra touch by dressing up the bottom of the granite with quarter inch round moldings. Giving it a nice finish as well as some extra support. These clips of before and after so far give it an idea of the change. Big difference. With some old spare tiles found in the washroom, we cut them to fit the bottom of the cabinets. Then glue and grouted them all around. This will protect the cabinets from water spills and make mopping a pleasure. Then once we took this AC wall unit down and closed in the opening, it transformed this kitchen even more into the 21st century. The new refrigerator is in, new faucet is installed, new shutoff valves and sink drain all installed and tested for leaks. The new stove is hooked up and the rest of the walls are all painted. By us doing the demo, resheating the walls, compounding, sanding, some tile work, removing the AC wall unit and blocking it in, painting, all the plumbing and electrical. We saved approximately 50% of the cost. Well worth it for this apartment small kitchen. I hope this video helped you along the way. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. See the description for links of tools and materials used in this video. And you all have a great day.